I, it's not so much that I chose to do the story of Scattergood, the story of Scattergood chose me. And so even though I've been insistent and forceful and often irritating, and I have, I have insisted that friends listen to this, this is one of our greatest collective legacies, is what were we doing at a time of, of danger and peril and, and the rising clouds of war? What were we doing at a grassroots level? This is America's largest grassroots response to the Holocaust. More than any Jewish grassroots attempts, more than anybody else, it happened to be the Quakers, it happened to be in Iowa, and it needs to be told and preserved. And if we don't act decisively, there is the risk that it will just disappear and go lost. I'm Michael Luig Trams. I live in Turing in the middle of Germany, where I'm a professor of social history at the Universität Erfurt. I'm still a member of the Des Moines Valley Friends Meeting, and I attend virtually, which is great given the distance and COVID. Scattergood Hospital was only part of my larger research as a doctoral student at Humboldt Universität in Berlin in the 90s. And I met 40 former refugees and staff from Scattergood. And I interviewed these people. They gave me their ship's passage tickets. They gave me you know, children's toys that the little girl had carried from Paris to um, Marseille when they fled the advancing German um, uh, troops. Um, they gave me diaries, letters, hundreds of photographs. So it didn't take long until soon I had this treasure trove. And the apex of all that were the interviews. These people were so kind and thorough in wanting to preserve their part of this history. They all saw this was a bigger thing and they wanted that this legacy be told and preserved and that's really my obligation still. The way that Scattered Good Hustle was created itself is sort of a, a miracle. Young Iowa Quakers met in Clear Lake, Iowa in the summer of 1938. I happened to come from Clear Lake, Iowa. I also spent my youth summer camps, church camps at that same camp, sort of my mother in the 40s and 30s. So it's ironic that these young Quakers gathered in my hometown um, in 1938 and said, the situation in Nazi Germany is insufferable. The Jews are being abused, they're being threatened. They could probably imagine some are being killed. Uh, there are others, non-Jews, who are also in a bad shape. And so the Iowa young Quakers wrote to the AFSC and said, you know, we could imagine bringing some of these refugees to Iowa in the summer and doing projects we could use the closed school at Scattergood. Ironically, the letter arrived at Clarence Pickett's uh, desk here in, in Philadelphia at the AFSC just as he was going on this fact-finding delegation to Nazi Germany in 1938. And what's very odd is Clarence Pickett's wife, Lily, by coincidence, only arrived in Germany four days before Hitler met with uh, Chamberlain and Dadier and the Germans marched into the Sudetenland and annexed part of Czechoslovakia. Anyway, Clarence Pickett returns. He writes a report. They were there September, October of 38. They get off the ship here. He hands his report in to the um, AFSC proper, confidential report. And the report is filed, stamped, and dated November 8th. On November 9th, the next day, was Kristallnacht. So, Clarence Pickett has just gotten this letter from these Iowa Quakers, and he's just returned himself. And he's seen, he's, he's interviewed Jews who are desperate to get out of the Nazi um, morass. And then he returns to Philadelphia and he gets reports that, uh, you know, synagogues are going up in flames. So he grabs the young Iowa Quakers offer and says, great, but we're not just going to send people to you in the summer, we'll send them to you around. And for the first time, the Iowa Quakers, so what we call the um, unprogrammed or FUM Quakers, and those days were called progressives, and the conservatives were the conservatives. Those two branches that had split in the 1870s or so over theology, you know, the whole Wilbride, Hicksite thing, they came together 50 years later to take over this abandoned school and make it a hostel. And when the Deutsch family from Vienna came, then this signaled a whole new episode of the hostel's history, that there'd be these um, business people, professionals, educators, none of whom could really practice their um, area back in Nazi Germany. They left with what they had, came to the 
far reaches of this country and hope to find a new life. And that's what Scattergood really did help them do. Our weary world is in dire need for some inspiration and for some role models and templates. And when you think that these Iowa Quaker kids, these young Iowa Quakers, in 1938, they came up with the idea, well, let's bring these refugees to Iowa. It's the most improbable, ridiculous idea there is. But when um, you know, Germany took over the Sudetenlan, and then only a couple months later, they were bringing the synagogues, you had to do something. And that's when the AFSC, which had the structure and some of the means, coupled with these young idealistic Quakers out in the prairie, it was a perfect wedding of an existing desire to help and then the need for help. And the other thing that was really great, I mean, we have all kinds of social welfare projects and we have, you know, um, social activist projects, but that these people were untrained and yet they gave them what they had and that was enough. And by actually having, it was largely 30 refugees at any given time to a ratio of 15 um, American staff. And so the acculturation process was really um, facilitated and, and um, speeded up by, by this, this contact of daily life together. And certainly that could be a model for today, that those who care and are able could literally live with those who need to find a new life. It worked without any big training or any big government investments. They worked on a shoestring. Um, they made it happen in the most improbable way, but it, it worked. Thanks so much for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every other Thursday. We'd like to thank the Friends Committee on National Legislation for sponsoring this week's video. The Friends Committee on National Legislation, or FCNL, is a national nonpartisan Quaker organization that lobbies Congress for peace, justice, and environmental stewardship. Join FCNL and tens of thousands of people, Quakers and friends, who share a belief in the power of relationship building to advance the world we seek. Visit FCNL online at www.fcnl.org. Thanks again for watching and have a happy Thursday.